All right, man. So great to see you. It's uh, <laughs> it's been it's been some time. Yeah, I don't know. Do we ever meet in person? I don't know. Like just, maybe once in passing somewhere, passing, like at a tournament. Tournaments. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've, I've watched you since you were like a kid. You know, I was I was young too, but yeah, I think you were younger. How old are you? No, I'm 37. 37. Yeah, so I'm about nine years older than you. So. Uncle yeah, Alberto, man, in the mix. <laughs> Just, you're, you're always, you're always in the periphery. Always good energy, and I know it. I just, I already know it. So Thanks, it's, uh, it's all good, man. Uh, and I'm more recently meeting Ed and Meredith, and they had a lot of really good things to say about you and doing Tac Fit. Congrats on Tac Fit and everything. And it's funny because the, you know, Ed doing Tac Fit and kind of talking about it. I was I was starting to kind of teach some of my students just mobility stuff. And I talked to him about that. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's what tack fit. That's what they're doing. They're kind of taking some of the stuff from Sambo and they're making it this thing that you can kind of absorb some of these basic feelings and movements. And I just thought that was amazing. I was like, oh, I thought I came up with this and it was already happening. Uh, but yeah, man, congrats on that. So thank you. man. Thank cool. you. It's a system that's really changed my life. And, you know, all the years of jujitsu and the same movements over and over and over you kind of get shaped a certain way and so it's helped me recover from a lot of injuries and you know I had some health issues as well so it really helped me kind of just yeah. with that and just make me work to my you know my be, be the rest of the best version of myself you know and it's allowed me to help other people as well so it's a, it's a big passion I get high just talking about it you know <laughs> yeah. cool that's yeah. all that's really special man it's it's really cool to I like one of the things that is really cool about it is like it it's a martial arts it's a martial arts way but it's a different frequency and that's what i'm really like i'm blown away by and i think you know your story and ed kind of mentioned a little bit um about your story and kind of what you went through much respect and like using that and having that connection a lot of people can't humble themselves to that level right and it was just it was part of what you went through and now you embraced it and it's this it's almost like a soft art it's almost its own style in a way depending on how you look at it yeah that's it you know mm -hmm. like uh you get like getting humbled kind of makes you can make you a better person it has has done that for me you know just being being humble like with with some health issues um but i look at at tack fit like it's own martial art and you don't have an opponent the opponent is yourself right and i don't know if you agree with this but maybe our biggest opponent is ourselves anyway right and mm -hmm. so and the, the fight is keeping your technique and so i was trying to train in a certain heart rate you know capacity like 80 percent. so and that the fight is like the technique is your breath your the quality of your movement and uh and um and uh you know the just putting it all together you know so and keeping keeping in that in that that you know that moderate intensity you're not going over it not getting too stressed because when you start sorry breath structure and movement so that the, you when you start to get too stressed what happens to your structure your shoulders start to come up your elbows start to go out right and jujitsu right the you want to keep your elbows in because you're last and just teach you all the biomechanics and when you start to lose when you start to get your heart rate too up too high you basically start to get out of whack and 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 you know, you're losing the fight and you start to over breathe right as well when you get tired and so mm -hmm. it, just, it teaches you that just with, with yourself and so when you take that off and put that on the mat with somebody else it really gives you a higher level of understanding so it's pretty cool yeah it's a it's a kata right it's a kata it's a, yeah it's a kata yeah with uh kind of taking like a little thing a little thing of everything you know uh things that work right neuroscience like the highest level of neuroscience when you break down all the stuff i've been on this like rabbit hole of uh just neuroscience and fascia these last like five six years and every thought that's been put behind every single movement, it's just mind blowing when you start to break down, you know, uh, all the mm -hmm. things that are behind it. Yeah, and it, it's it. one of the things that's kind of blown me away more lately, like just, and we can kind of get into as much as you want, but the just the journey in the last like five years for me and just kind of breaking through in my own way. And, and like you said, getting humbled, but also just looking at martial arts in a deeper way and looking at kind of what, the relationship that I have with martial arts, because we started with such a preconceived idea, just growing up in California already, the movement had already started, you know, you have this in the water, like, how do you get out of that situation, like right. evasion, you know, for yourself, like, how do you move, you know, but sorry, I cut you off. 
Yeah, no, no, just uh, just mobility, right? Mobility is like as I'm as I'm learning and learn, you know, as I'm learning. But mobility is life, and as you start to lose mobility, you lose like your vitality. You lose your your and you lose like part of you, right? You lose that that capacity to move, and so mobility is like life itself, you know. And so when you start to lose lose things, you know, as you get older, people like to lose their mobility and don't pay attention to it. You know, that's why it's so important to like really put that in your mind. That's strength, right? That's real strength is having being mobile, but also having the strength, but that balance, right? But mobility is so important. That's one of the things that I think we really benefited from being Gracie's, you know, is in the water. Like, how do you get out of that situation? Like right. evasion, you know, for yourself, like, how do you move, you know, but sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, no, no, just, uh, just mobility, right? Mobility is like, as, a, as I'm learning and learn, you know, as I'm learning, but mobility is life. And as you start to lose mobility, you lose like your vitality, you lose your, your, and you lose like part of you, right? You lose that, that capacity to move. And so mobility is like life itself, you know? And so when you start to lose, lose things, you know, as you get older, people like to lose their mobility and don't pay attention to it. You know, that's why it's so important to like really put that in your mind. That's strength, right? That's real strength is having, being mobile, but also having the strength, but that balance, right? But mobility is so important. That's one of the things that I think we really benefited from being Gracie's, you know, a lot of people and it's a it's a double edged sword, but there's benefits that, you know, I think being growing up doing martial arts, you have this mobility kind of war chest that most of your friends, most of your peers don't have access to. And so a lot of people like got into jujitsu later, let's say, because there was this boom. And so you had a lot of adults who went, oh, OK, I'm going to start doing this. This is cool. Well, they didn't have the foundation of that mobility. So they started later and now they need to figure out how are they moving and not muscling or just being, you know, and so we were blessed in that we were just from babies, we were kind of handed this mobility because we were already in the movement of the technique of the training so early that it molded our actual, it, it like molded our neurons and our synopsis and our, in our synapses and our, from our brain to our, our, like, uh, what do you call it? Your uh, parasympathetic, parasympathetic uh, nervous system to your nervous system. So all this stuff was already kind of so laid out that your nervous system, you have the motor neurons, like you all, you guys built the map of how to move, you moving your body in all different directions, right? With jujitsu, the proprioception, right? Where you are in yes. space. Yes. So like, those, the, those, those equilibrium, the balance. Yes. All of that was like, we had it from so early, which is the, yeah. you know, which is the benefit of sports as well. And anything, you know, and, you know, you have wrestlers who started as kids and that changes their whole life that changes their whole, you know, and then like the, and that's what I realized, like going on this, this process and doing my film and stuff and starting off in China, I was like training and I've seen like how much these people are actually training in a way that was just mind blowing and the stuff that they were putting themselves through and the way, like the actual physicality and the mobility of it is like, is like your highest level gymnast you know, and they're just out on some mountain and no one even knows about them, you know, they're just out there. And so it's like, that's to me, that's, this is, this is going to be, I'm like, I'm, I'm nerding out already all the stuff you're talking about with, because <laughs> <laughs> this is all, it's all, all this stuff is ancient. Right. And there's a reason why all these guys did this for thousands of years, right. Yes. All these movement practices. Yes. And that's why like jujitsu is ancient, you know, and like we have our Gracie lineage, which I will say like I'm third generation. Cause I'm counting from Elu. Because like even his dad didn't do jujitsu. His dad saw jujitsu and went, okay, Carlos, you start. And then Carlos taught, you know, and started doing the thing and showed everybody the way. And so, but it was like, that's Gracie jujitsu and like that's Brazilian culture. And so there was all this mobility stuff that had to do with like the Brazilian, like malandraging and like the physicality of how they move. Yeah. That was different from the Japanese like culture and like the the strict kind of nature of how they develop their style. Um, so yeah, that's that's fascinating to me. That's a very interesting subject. So you surprised me. I thought you were here in California. I didn't realize you were in, out in Tennessee. Mm. How did you uh, How did you end up in Tennessee? Man, that's like that's like uh, how did Elu end up with jujitsu? You know, or Carlos? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a long. Long story, sort of, but we we ended up. So, I mean, what what do you want? What kind of rundown do you want? Where do you want to go into? But we we love it. <laughs> we landed here and we love it, and it's it's a cool spot, man. It's um, 
you know, I don't want everybody to come over here. There's already too many people coming here, but it's, it's fun. We like it and it's a good vibe. And there's a lot of, you know, great geography and, and it's a very cool energy and you have like the equestrian scene and the, and then you have like the balance of just the, the music scene, but also kind of like a conservative scene. And so it's a very, I'm a, I'm a Libra. So I'm like, just, oh, this is a very balanced place and you have nature and wildlife and, you know, so it's, it's cool. I take my bike and I ride like mountain bike trails. And so when COVID hit our family, like my wife and my kids, we were already traveling and moving. And, and so by the time COVID hit, we were, I was already like in post-production with my film when it really set in. And then we ended up going to Indiana and spending some time there just on a farm that my fam my, my wife's family has and just really enjoyed that experience. And then from there, we ended up kind of accidentally coming to Nashville where it was a, the, the septic tank of the house filled up and then nobody would come out because it was Christmas. And so we were like, oh, let's go to Nashville. We've been wanting to go there. So we came down to Nashville and we just kind of fell in love with the whole vibe here. And so then that kind of one thing led to another. And, um, you know, we're fortunate that we have that flexibility and we were, we were able to say, oh, this is kind of where we want to raise our kids and, and just put our, our roots down. Oh, that's, and that's so I've been very nomadic, like from that point, before that point. So we've been kind of all over and we, the, the kids spent with us two and a half months in Japan. They spent with us like six months in Europe. We spent, we went to like three months in Costa Rica. We went to the Bahamas. And I have private students that I'm working with, you know, that so it's kind of facilitating that and then teaching seminars and stuff. And and then all the while I'm putting a film together and, and really kind of a new company that is springing up from, you know, everything that is kind of martial arts and, and my surroundings. Mm -hmm. And so but yeah, Nashville, it's a it's an interesting spot. Right. And then you also have like a FOMO thing that I used to have that I don't have anymore of being in L.A. and feeling like, oh, I'm missing out. There's something happening there. But now where I'm at in my life, our roots down. Oh, that's, and so that's I've been very nomadic, like from that point, before that point. So we've been kind of all over and we the, the kids spent with us two and a half months in Japan. They spent with us like six months in Europe. We spent, we went to like three months in Costa Rica. We went to the Bahamas. And I have private students that I'm working with, you know, that so it's kind of facilitating that and then teaching seminars and stuff. And and then all the while I'm putting a film together and, and really kind of a new company that is springing up from, you know, everything that is kind of martial arts and, and my surroundings. Mm -hmm. And so, but yeah, Nashville, it's a, it's an interesting spot. Right. And then you also have like a FOMO thing that I used to have that I don't have anymore of being in LA and feeling like, Oh, I'm missing out. There's something happening there, but now where I'm at in my life and with my kids, I just don't have that. So I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm here. I'm doing it. Yeah, it seems like that's the way, right? People are moving out of California. They go on to enjoying enjoying nature. And and uh, do you have a do you have a, do you have some land with farm farm animals or anything like that? No, 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 no. We're we're not there yet. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm at the. I'm at this. I'm. I'm kind of like coming off of the ground, man. To be honest, like in my life and in everything, and just coming off of metamorphosis and yeah. like this is this has been kind of a very fluid, very flexible period but we're just kind of getting a sense for where we want to be. We're just getting a sense for like how we want to live and, and, you know, in what way we want to live. And so we're just feeling it out and then we want to get an idea, but that's the plan, you know, to have some nice land and have animals, have a horse, do that vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's, let's talk about Genzai, the, your magazine. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Your epic magazines. I was nerding out when you're showing me all the, just like all the stuff that you have going on in there with, with, with the updated version of magazines, right? The way they should be fight magazine. Yeah. I mean, it's not, so it's a, it's a martial arts publication and it's, it's digital. It's a digital flip book. So it's really efficient and you can just kind of like on your iPad, take your time, read through it, flip through it really like seamlessly. Um, we can have videos in there. So it's, it's exciting, man. But the project itself, like Genzai, really came out of the ashes of Metamoris. So you know, we kind of have to talk about Metamoris to talk about it because it was like Metamoris happened. We've business-wise and debt-wise, we just went way over our heads, ended up hitting the ground. And then me personally, that was when we left LA and went to Colorado. And so that process of just kind of like, I was in Colorado for three years and just completely kind of, um, 
I guess you could say recharged and just kind of got a new view on myself and my life and just what am I really looking for? What do I want to do? And also like, how do I relate to martial arts? And then so kind of going from that, we said, okay, let's go like for my wife and myself, we didn't really have as a team, we didn't know what the next step was in terms of me being able to really apply myself and be of service in martial arts. And she's very adventurous. So she kind of got the feeling that I wanted to go into my roots and I wanted to understand more of my heritage. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the calling that keep that keep kept coming up for me. And I would literally like wake up from a dream. You know, you have like a sense where you're like, oh, what was that? And you have a dream and something is like, boom, you need to do this. And the feeling was, I need to go into my roots. Like I knew I was doing jujitsu, but I didn't know. And I knew that I came from a jujitsu family and I knew that I was like tough and it was becoming popular and it was cool, but I didn't. And I had a jujitsu business that failed. That was this catastrophic thing in my life, like personally and financially and all this stuff that there was so much noise that I was just was like, oh, what am I going to do with this? And the feeling and the dreams. And as I kind of cleared my mind in Colorado and just, again, you go outside in Colorado where we were and you all of a sudden, like you have no noise except for nature. So it's just like, it changes your whole, whereas in LA, you can't get silence in LA. You can't go outside and hear nothing but nature. It's very, very difficult. And so even just anywhere around that area, even if you're on the beach, you're hearing cars go by. And right. so to get that detox, like just in so many ways, it gave me the sense of like, oh no, this is what you're doing. You need to go into your heritage. Like you don't even understand what you even come from. You've been told stories. You think you know jujitsu. You think you don't know anything. You're lost. And so the sense was I need to go China, Japan, Brazil, and I want to get some kind of reference for ground fighting overall. And so I need to understand like different styles of ground fighting, different styles of standing fighting. And what I wanted to do is I took a camera with me and my goal was to basically train with people, put myself in the room with different masters and then get a sense for what was there, get some feedback. And if I was inspired enough, I would try to capture anything and try to capture what I learned. But at that, at that point, I had no idea. I didn't know it was going to be called Genzai. I didn't know what I was really doing, except for I have this passion for cinematography, for capturing things, and we can just do this and we can pull this off. So we put all of our stuff in storage. We went and did that and we were just nomads. And that was before COVID. And then COVID kind of started to hit, but we were already moving around enough. And I had kind of documented enough experiences to where I just was like mind blown. You know, like I showed up in Japan and I was Googling and I found that there was a Kendo tournament like the next day in Kyoto and we were in Tokyo it was like three hour bullet train um and I just went whoa like this is a world championship for kendo I don't even know what kendo is like I have no idea and I had no connections no nothing and I just go on my I get on the train go there show up with my camera and I had like my google uh, translate on my phone and I show up and I'm like hey I'm gonna you know I'd like to shoot this if I can and just see this and I didn't know what they were going to say. I was expecting them to be like, get out of here. You can't come in here. And this gentleman comes up who spoke English, was really good English, wearing a full suit. And he said, hey, where are you from? I said, hey, you know, I'm from, you know, call it like United States and I'm doing this thing. I just want to, you know, if I can, I'd like to kind of capture this. And um, he's like, oh, thank you very much for coming. And just like really good energy. Like, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming. Um, here's your lunch ticket. Um, go this way. And they put me on the floor of the kendo tournament. And I ended up like pulling my stuff out, capturing this kendo tournament. And like, as I was capturing it, I just was kind of like, it, it was just the whole like mind blown. And I just was like, I can't believe that I'm actually doing this. I caught it. And I went home, I went back to the, the spot in Tokyo with Alicia and I had and with my wife, I had edited the kendo tournament really quickly on the bullet train. And when I arrived, I, she was like, oh, how was it? And I played this video for her. And she was like, oh, OK, this is crazy. Like, whoa. And I just was like, yeah, this is like, you know, and like from that point, that kendo tournament, hmm. what, what I got from that was not like, oh, I know what I'm going to do with this. I know this is going to be a company, nothing. It was just like this, like these people need more respect, like this whole thing. I didn't even care about this three days ago. 
let alone a year ago. Like I didn't even know this existed. And I didn't realize like how significant this was to like the tapestry of even what makes me a martial artist. I didn't have any respect for this. And I, and I have, now that I've captured this amazing footage that really doesn't exist anywhere else, it's not on YouTube, you can't, nothing of that quality. Like I have a huge responsibility to do something with this that is actually like respectful of them and also in some way gives the, the world something that they can go, oh, okay, like we can respect that too, which is very difficult because you have, you know, everything is digital right now. Like we're digital. And if we were sitting in the same room, you would feel a different energy from me. We would have a different interaction and that's changing very fast. And so people are consuming so much content. And so part of it is like, we're going into that evil, but we have to do it in a way that's like as respectful as possible, or we're just wasting our time. And so it's this really strong kind of uh, dichotomy of like, how do you bring full respect in the modern times with like how MMA is so hype driven and at the same time, like create this connection to the root to what is really like martial arts. And so Kendo was just that one experience. I ended up going to China and training Wing Chun in the mountains with this master that had been doing Wing Chun and other styles his whole life. And it was like being in the room with my grandfather, but different. It was like, it was like this guy was like his energy, his, his mobility, his connection, like his ability to just help his students, like he was a true master. And I went, oh shit, like these are real masters that exist that I didn't even pay attention to before. Like I would have had no respect for whatsoever because we kind of grew up with the narrative that like jujitsu won, we're the best. And if we didn't win yet, we should prove it. And it was this like takeover mentality that which I understand but at the same time was like also kind of limiting me from my real view of myself because I was denying this part of what makes something very real. And so it was this breakthrough where I went, oh shit, like this is martial arts. Like this is what makes, you know, like this is what makes it all make sense for me because of everything that I went through. And like I had made martial arts a business with Meta Morris and I knew I had like the right intentions and I knew I had a good energy about like really, you know, paying athletes and taking it to the next level and all that myself and my partner, Rob, but like, we didn't, I didn't really have the respect for what I was doing that I do now. And so it was just like, it all needed to happen. And so now I'm at this phase where I'm like, oh, like it's much deeper than that for me. Like for me at this point, it's all about respect and it's all about like, how do you see the commonalities of these styles? Because that's true mixed martial arts. Like when you're talking about MMA to really do that, like into the future, there's a huge chasm between what is like the hype right now and everything that's happening. And you have like a Jake Paul meme in the periphery. And then that's kind of this like one fortress and, but it's very much like there's a huge chasm that's like the size of the Grand Canyon, but like times a thousand next to that. And then you have all of these traditional styles. You have martial artists that are just kind of doing their own thing off in the middle of nowhere or some other random place that no one's talking about. But they're representing a part of this energy and this movement and this culture that you have to respect. Otherwise, you don't you don't really get it. You know, that was the realization for me. And as I kind of continued to put myself in these different rooms and dojos and competitions, I was going, wait a second. Like every time I did that, it just became more clear that there's through lines that I didn't even know about, but it completed me in real time. Where So I'm having this life-changing experience where that chasm that is the Grand Canyon was inside of me too. I was living that. I, I had my my current jujitsu life and I had the roots of jujitsu and there was a it was like a wasteland in between. So I didn't have any respect at all. And so that was like I had to throw myself over here. And man, I was like at the lowest point of my life. I was like I was in a very weird place. And if it wasn't for like three very important people, I don't know where I would have been. Like I had a very good friend in Colorado who's a, he's actually an Aikido master, Chris. 
And he was like, he would come and meet with me. He was my first student. I opened a little dojo in the mountains in Colorado. And I just was kind of like trying to do it for fun and not do it for money and try to do something that was just like for this little tiny, I was like the master in the mountain out there. And, and he came in, he was my first student and he was a, he was a black belt in Aikido. And he came in and he was like, dude, what are you doing here? Like what? He's like, man, sign me up. And he like signed out his waiver and we're in this room and he was getting private classes with me like right away from the beginning, every class. And he would come and sit and talk to me and he would talk to me about Metamorris and he would talk to me about different things. And I'd just be like, dude. And he was kind of this like master. He became a master for me. And I didn't know what that meant at that time even, but he was guiding me and he was just like, dude, like, yeah, like, and he would so simply, he would just be like, no, but you can just do this. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And like, oh no, you have to appreciate like everything you've been through. You have to like really appreciate that and move forward. And like that, you're more qualified now than you are, than you've ever been to do anything with martial arts because of what you've been through. And so I just was like, oh man. And so he really was like a big reason why I just went and I knew I had to go deeper because I had gone and done some Aikido classes with him and I, I was blown away. Like I was learning about jujitsu and I went, oh, why is this happening? You know, and, and what he would say, which is interesting, and I talk about him in the movie, is what he would say and what he had said was actually you need to learn other styles to learn Aikido. And it's like, well, that's the Bruce Lee idea. You know what I mean? Like you can't, and it's true for jujitsu as well. And that's what I didn't realize. Like we grew up with like, no, you do jujitsu. But like my grandfather wasn't even that way. He knew, he learned from the capoeiristas because they were fighting. He learned from the, from the uh, Luta Livre guys because they were at war. And so it was like, there, there was this like, there was this um, confluence of styles already. And that's like the name of my film is Confluence. And so all of this was happening and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm building a new production company, per, um, a, new, um, publica a new publication and a new film. And all these things are kind of happening under this new Genzai vibe. And Alicia, my wife came up with that, that name and found that name was like, oh, you should do this. And it's interesting because it's Genzai means right now in Japanese. It means in the present moment. Right now, being present. Yes. And it's, well, it's in the present moment. So it's not necessarily being present. It's like in the moment, in this slice of time, that is the moment that is Genzai. And the cool thing that like for me is like as humans, how we interpret the moment is if we can connect to our roots very authentically, our moment is more connected and more powerful. And like, that's the whole thing with Genzai is like, if we can connect the roots and be present in some way, that's a reflection of what I wanna do with my martial arts and with my, anything that I do, whether it's business or life. And, you know, obviously it's like, we have to make a living. We have to make money to support any venture as, as everyone knows, and to have it be influential and to have it educate and inspire people but doing it in a way where it's like we are fully connected and respecting. And so it's like these relationships that I made tra traveling and connecting with people, like these are lifelong relationships because I was ready for that at my point in my, in, in my life and what I had gone through. And so there, there, there you are. That's the, the podcast version, which we can I mean, do. That's, can that's, that's, yeah. Wow. That's deep. That's really deep, you know? And, and uh, it's just uh, so interesting to come full circle from Gracie in action to, to a moment like this of you yes. traveling filming embracing the kendo and just learning from from everybody right yes and most and like learning from myself like going deep in myself and saying oh, okay like what are these people doing and like a master in china a master in thailand a master in europe a master in brazil these masters are are like they are like treasures of society they are very important they're like the priests in the church or like the if you want to go there and i don't know if some people might not think of that as a good example i'm sure there's there and again it's a great example because we're, you have we're energy who, right we're energy have, well not only that you have people who are very authentic who have like walked the path who have gone through the void and who will come back to guide another and pull them through the void and and guide them and allow them to do it themselves and who have been through that process and like the, how significant that is. 
And so that's where like I finished this whole process. And then I felt like I actually had I had a, a, a enough of a view. It's kind of like when you say you have enough to know you don't know. I had enough of a view of what it means to be a master that I knew I wasn't even a master yet. Like I was in like we had grown so early. We were so good at jujitsu that we were like, oh, OK, we're cool. We have people calling us professor. We're in our 20s, in our teens. People are already giving us that juice. And it's like, no, 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 no. You haven't lived. You haven't gone through the process. Like I'm just getting started. And so like really being with masters of different styles, I went, oh, like there's levels to this shit. Like this is not just, and it's not even just, oh, you can beat someone in a fight. It's like, no, it's how you conduct yourself. It's how you arrive at a, at a confrontation. It's how you deal with situations, it's how you talk to people, like all these things. You have masters that are, are, you have so many different levels of that. And so coming off of that whole adventure, I ended up spending a lot of time in Destin, Florida, where I have a private student. And that's where I ran into Ed. And sitting with him, as soon as I met with Ed Coughlin there, your friend, he, I went, oh, this guy gets it. Like immediately. And it was like, oh, it's like you're in a different frequency. And you just go, oh, okay, this person gets it. And just recently, he introduced me to his master, who's a Chinese Kung Fu master, uh, Master Gao. And this gentleman lives in Tampa most of the time, but he travels to Europe, uh, to, to Asia and Taiwan, and he's from Taiwan. Uh, and he does a lot of internal and external martial arts. And that's where Ed and Meredith, I met them because they do a lot of internal as well, as, as well as external and Meredith trains jujitsu now. Um, but they do, they, they focus on healing and it's all martial arts. And so this sense that like, there's this internal external and like, that is martial arts. It's yin and yang. If you don't embrace that, you're not in the, you don't understand. And so this kind of like cultural depth coming into mastery and being with him and then having him be, have enough of a, of a giving me enough of, I guess, a, a blessing to bring me to his master and say, hey, here, you can meet him in his living room in Tampa. It was like another boom where I just went, oh, okay. And he, this gentleman was teaching me Kung Fu on his couch and doing things to me and teaching me things that I would not have been ready for until that moment. And to me, that's Genzai. Like I was, like I was bringing, I was channeling everything from my roots and he went, yeah, like you're good. You can just, you need, like, he's like, you're good. You're coming out of from where you are. I can show you this. And so it's, it's a very deep level of communication. And that's where like a lot of people in MMA right now, the hype and the whole stream, it's like, yeah, bro, whatever. Like y'all just take you down and choke you out. And it's like, man, we, we've been there. We've talked about that, but that's like, that's one level, right? That's one frequency of how you're participating. And so it's a huge responsibility um, that I'm being kind of driven to where I'm like, now I'm like, oh shit, the fact that I even know this and I'm Holic and I'm a Gracie and I have to, tr I have to kind of create some kind of way to communicate this is a, it's a fun life uh, challenge, you know? So here we are. Yeah. Wow. You know, what a, what a yin and the yang. Oh, it's a, it's a, you know, as I was, it's so funny how like I was talking about the Gracie in action, but when I was younger, I used to make fun of, you know, like katas and, you know, different other martial arts because I was a jiu-jitsu representative, you know, proud, right? Proud and mm -hmm. we're, better than, we're better than everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And now like tack fit is basically like a, you know, it's a, it's a kata, right? A kata system mm -hmm. and it's totally transform, transform me. And now I understand the, like the why, you know, the why, why it's important, why, how it helps, you know, your proprioception, your awareness of space, your mapping of where you are in space, right? How you work. And with that, when you have, when your you know, your brain has an understanding of where you are in space, it relaxes more, right? The parasympathetic, it's more, it relaxes more. And guess what? Your, your mobility improves. Mm -hmm. And when you're tired, when you're not sure, right? Everything gets tight, you lose mobility. You know, we have the three satellite systems or the visual system or vestibular system inside the inner, the inner ears, like the size of our fingernail, you know, where your head is in space. And then your, you know, all the, in your ligaments and tendons and your and your body where you know what kind of gives and they integrate together telling you where you are in space and so yeah man it's uh it's that's very deep you know all these these things and and genzai was in the I had, 
brought up a, a, a interesting story for me, like just being present. I had this black belt, really high level psychologist. And I asked him like, man, I, people that do jujitsu, it seems like they're, they're young, they're, they're young, they're younger, they're young at heart. Why is that? And he, he pauses and looks at me and he says, that's interesting you say that because when you're a kid, everything's in the now, everything's in the present. As you get older, we're always in the past, we're in the future, we're never in the present. So jujitsu brings you back to your childhood. Mm. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a mind blowing. And I think tack with too, like doing the, like not katas, but doing tack food for me, brings you totally into the present. That's why I consider it a martial art. For me, it's a martial art. It's just with yourself. It's not you versus anybody else, but you, you versus yourself. And so all these things that just really resonates with me. It's uh, it's really that man. Well, that idea of you versus yourself is exactly like the, that. If I was to take away one crucible from my adventure, from my journey, is that it's the most cliche thing, but it's exactly the idea of martial arts, and it's this idea of like transcendence, and you're going to have to like you're either in the same space. You're like you, you, everyone essentially as humans, we're so smart that we're trying to get a new level of understanding all the time. We want to improve. We want to do these things. But that idea of like, how do you actually do that? Well, there's a, there has to be a physical bridge, a mental bridge. And if you want to, you can say a spiritual bridge. But essentially, those are the only things that we can say are true beyond the you know it, it's like we, our own sense of the world and our own feeling and our own body in our way and that's the idea of craft is that you're having to break down yourself you're getting us a, a relationship you're the, the universe is giving you a feedback loop in real time and if whether you're a, you know a potter who's shaping clay an artist um you know a a a, a, a carpenter um, someone who, you know, and that's like these, a lot of these like blue collar things specifically, what's happening right now in the world is a lot of stuff is like so sophisticated and everything's on the computer and so much of this stuff on the computer is like, you have to kind of channel the blue collar into the kind of computer bits space, the, the world of bits, because there's so much like, it's so easy to kind of just lose your sense of self because you're you're participating in a projection and you're getting your feedback from a projection. And that's where like with my kids, I don't let them use devices unless my son, he's into making music. He can use, he can use it to make like on a software, he can do, he can make sounds, like he can make a music, like a, a, a song, he can compose because he's using it as a tool. He's getting a reference, he's getting a feedback loop. And so that kind of process of craft, I try to introduce that and, and support him to do that. But this idea of like, it's you and you is true. And yes, there's the other side of that. There's the dichotomy, which is you in space. And then you have everyone in space that's participating with you. Um, but this idea of like that responsibility is, is, is transcendence. That's it. It's martial arts is a vehicle for transcendence. And either you're, you're evolving or you're not, you know? And, and so it's like, you you have to take wherever your position is and you have to transcend and that's where like the value of sticking with one style is that you transcend in a way that you're continuously kind of hitting that rock. And so then it becomes a very personal thing in, in this really specific way. And then at the same time, you kind of do want to introduce some other elements, but there's value to having one root, like one piece. And that's where I think like this, this these, a lot of these like MMA fighters that are very successful, they have that, they have this one style that they come from they have this one piece that make that kind of is their depth that completes them and then they have these other pieces that they add on top of that of course and they're adapting for their training and for their environment but they have this root and so that's interesting to me as well um, but transcendence right like how are you evolving for whatever you want to do and you know that I think that's ultimately what people want when they show up to an academy you know it's like yeah we want self-defense also but part of that is you have to transcend so that you can actually deal with that situation that happens in the street that's super scary, that's beyond your capacity right now. We're going to take you to that other level. 
And that's why, like, when I met with this master in China that I trained under for a very short period of time, the feeling was like at that time when I arrived there and what I was doing, there was no way that I would have challenged that person to a fight. Like it wasn't in me. I didn't have the power to do it. I was just like, I was already like broken. I was already at a place where I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm a thousand pieces because you're already doing something that is so transcendent that I can't even compete with that. And so it's like, at what level am I going to fight this person? You know what I mean? Because then I'm going to get a certain return. And what's the value of that? You know what I mean? So it was just like, it changed the, it changed the field of play. And in a sense, that's what makes him a master. That's what makes him even more effective than me at martial arts. Because if another part is like somebody comes into your dojo and they're like, hey, man, you know what? I don't like what you're doing here. Show me what's up. <laughs> and you, what do you got to do? It's like, OK, let's go. That's what, like that's the business we're in, you know? And so it's like if you can prevent everyone from challenging you forever, that's martial arts. You know what I mean? <laughs> in every situation. So it's like, well, now what? You know, and so that's where like sport that's is it. not really martial art. Sport is like we're deciding to show up. We're deciding to play by a certain rule. We're deciding a certain time limit. Even metamorphs, we did 20 minutes, no points. It's either a draw or you catch the person. And, you know, there's always something to complain about. But people, the main complaint, which there were many praise, many people who praised it. But the main complaint was all oh, these draws. We got to get out, got to get rid of that. Well, why is that? Because people are addicted to wanting a winner or a loser every time. They can't just appreciate what happened. And the fact that you can't necessarily get an answer right now because we don't have enough time to give you an answer because you have a schedule, you have to go to work. So you, we need a 20 minute time limit for this match so that we can have six matches and then you go home to your family. Otherwise there should be no time limit. And then we'll give you an answer. You know what I mean? But you don't even want to stick around for that because you don't have that level of education. You don't even care that much to even see what the intricacies of what's there. Or it's not even worth your time, which totally respect. And, and I understand that as well. I'm not going to sit and watch every jujitsu match that's no time limit. And that's, the, that's also the difficulty of being an effective, people call it a promoter, but it's like a facilitator of these experiences. It's no joke. And you have a lot of promoters who are going in certain lines to give you a certain experience that, okay, yeah, you'll pay for it. It's a great transaction. You're, you feel like you got pleased. You got a certain vigor, a certain sense of like a, a, a feeling that you wanted to, you came for, you got a dopamine rush, give us your money, have a nice day. It's a great business model. And so violence sells, right? So there's that aspect, but then there's everything to the guy in China who doesn't even need to fight you, who's just a different energy. And you're like, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, you know, this is priceless. And, and the thing is, they're not even charging you that much money. <laughs> you know, like they don't even care. And so you have this whole spectrum. And it's like, well, that's, that's exciting to me that you have so much that is happening that I'm just waking up to. And so I'm just like, and that's where like the magazine is coming together so organically the film came together, it unfurled, it was like a flower. It didn't, I didn't make it, I didn't even go there wanting to make a film. I took a camera, which I'm glad I did. Like I trained with these guys in China for three days straight with my camera in my room, I didn't even touch it. And I went into like, I lost my projection, I, I lost my relative notion of time. And I was just in this training and doing these Wing Chun katas and other Qigong and meditations and shit. And then I won, and then I just kind of was like, wait, I need to kind of, I should capture some of this. This is amazing. And so it's like a lot of the film was this kind of like very organic piece where I built those relationships and they were like, oh, well, you know, and I'm going through all the exercises in the Wing Chun and people are like, dude, have you done martial arts before? Like, and I'm doing five classes a day for an hour and a half each class for three days. And it felt like an, like this year long experience. It was crazy. And so I just was like, whoa, this is martial arts. Like these people are actually like, they're fully devoted to this. Whereas in the West, what are we doing? We have our job and we go do martial arts to kind of like let off some steam. Whereas like the way this, you know, master go, this, this master in Japan, in China, the way he grew up was like in the mountains, on, in a temple, cold concrete, knuckles, push-ups, 
like you that is that is transcendence for your mind that is not anything else you know what i mean like your body just becomes this vessel and then you're doing all kinds of shit and it's like dude okay respect like that's the commitment that's the lifelong transcendence and you're still here you're still sharing your time with people like you didn't switch and go and just try to make money and do something else and get a job as an engineer like you're living a very meager life just to stay and do the things that you've done like man like that's that's a treasure that's an absolute treasure that's what makes him happy right that's what gives him the richness the, the, his what he does with his life and that's what makes him a warrior is like you you're doing the real you're fighting the good fight like you're maintaining a, a presence and a connect and a consistency that is just like like that's what my dad's been trying to teach me my whole life you know what I mean? Like, dude, show up, work hard, be honest, like train hard, do, you know, you're going to go in and fight. They're going to fuck you up. Like you need to be ready. You need to put in the time. You need to put the pressure that like times 10 where I felt like, okay, I, we kind of did this, but we grew up in California. It was plush. You know, we had cars, we were running around, we're going to hang out at parties, like have fun and then go back to the Academy and like, just, you know, vibes. Everyone's giving us all this love, man, these guys, the way they did it, <laughs> There, <laughs> nobody's so, watching nothing <laughs> yeah <laughs> there was no gracie hype like you just showed up and just did that oh dang like ooh. so it's yeah there's a lot there's a lot to explore and there's a lot to share with people especially in the west especially because martial arts is becoming popular so it feels like a it feels like an even bigger responsibility because you almost have like this big misinterpretation in a way where a lot of people are like, oh, this is cool. Okay, yeah, UFC, it's hype, it's cool, it's fun. Fuck, you can beat him, you can beat him. Well, and then it's like, well, you beat a guy who beat a guy who beat you. And it's like, well, and like, how do we rationalize this? It's like, we don't know what's going on. And so there's just so much to just like, oh no, but that's one piece. And then there's all this, and there's all these things, and there's all these styles, and they relate, and there's cultures, and it's like people and the energy and what they're doing. It's all fascinating to me. There's a reason, right? The, the the traditions, right? The reason why they do certain things. And like you go back to the, you're talking about the kendo, the first tournament that you went to. What was the, what was the, why did it mean? Why did it, why did it mean so much? Why, why did you feel it? Why, why, did, why was it so powerful for you? Dude, the kendo athletes, man, like the way that they approach the competition. I mean, there was there was a number of facets, but the way that they approach the competition with so much respect. And this is a Japanese culture thing as well, which is deep. But the way that they compete and the ferocity and like the level, the, the intensity of how they put themselves out there and the balance of that with how they act before and after the competition is almost like two completely different people. And to me, that's, that's so powerful and so underlooked because it's like you have Dr. Jack, like um, what is it? Jekyll and Hyde, right? Like this idea of like, you, you have a, you have a completely unleashed kind of experience. And then you have a, this very proper human that is like, and that's like, to me, that's part of martial arts is like the whole point is you're supposed to transcend and get better at style so that you fight less hard. Am I right? It's like you, you, you fight less hard against yourself. Like you're actually more effective. So you're actually fighting less. And this is where people say it's like we fight not to fight. Like there's something to that that's actually very technical in a technical sense. That's true. Like the better fighter, he makes fewer moves and he does them more effectively and he gets you. And that's like, you know, like Hodger, his, his competition experience, like he's doing the same few techniques and he's executing every time. And so like that, and I kind of, I, I digress a little bit, but the idea of just like the, the notion that you are, you are as a human changing that dramatically and, and applying yourself in such a heavy way was new to me, you know, was like, oh, okay, like, and I get it, I'm a human too, and I live my life and stuff, but I also kind of like, got myself in this vibe of like, oh, I'm a fighter, I'm tough, I'm all these things, and you kind of talk yourself up, and that's cool too, but part of it is like, like, I wouldn't even shake people's hands before fights, 
because I would be like, you know, I don't want to give energy, but I also like, don't want to like, it's like, I don't, I'm angry at people. Like I'm angry at myself. I'm all, the, all these things are emotionally that are happening in me that I don't even understand. You know what I mean? Whereas it's like, and I get that's more of a sport. And I think like the way we came up with like pride and you're going to fight people and it's like almost to the death and they're going to stalk or kick you in the head. And it's a different rule set, but still it's like, how, if, how well can you be like a human and be authentically yourself and at the same time, become this animal version of yourself that is going to, in the moment, deal with chaos and problems. Like, that's interesting to me, right? And I, to, to whatever degree I'm capable of doing that, I'm not even that cool. But like, that's just interesting to me. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm fascinated by that. So that was in Kendo, one of the things that blew me away. Their footwork, the speed of their footwork, the way that they stand, the way that they move their feet extremely like so important and so powerful and just changed my view on footwork because so I went wait like they're standing in this way where it's like you know it, it's it's almost like a Bruce Lee stance like the L stance that we do for jiu-jitsu but it's a little bit like they stick their back heel out a little more their feet are kind of parallel and they do this like choppy stomp and they kind of run at you really quick and they back up and they do the same thing and they're they're moving in a very linear fashion because they're they have they need to get in and get out really quick and get the tip of the sword to touch. But they, the way that they do that and the intensity of it is just like, oh, dang, like you, you have to take a page out of that book, like their footwork, their movement. Um, and just, man, the whole vibe, the whole Zen of it was crazy. Like the whole experience, the whole, it just was, man, you know, and I don't know if I look at it just because I'm, I'm also like the way my mind works as a filmmaker. I'm like, I want to just kind of like absorb as much as I can of what's going on here. Um, and so I kind of, I, I elaborate, I think when I talk about it a little bit, um, but it's, it's, it, and see, that's like the thing for me too, is capturing it. It's like, I have to do it justice. And so I feel this, like, I feel another chasm of like, I'm not quite there. I'm not doing it justice. And I, I feel like I got pretty close with the footage that I got, you know? So I was like, I was grateful for that. Um, there's, there's, yeah. You're talking about there's levels, right? There's levels and, you know, maybe you don't know why or what you feel it. There's the, like a simple thing, like the, with the respect that they had, right. The deep, the deep gestures, the, 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 the energy in the room, like you were saying, if we're together, it's going to be different than when we're on the computer. Right. Mm -hmm. So those things, like those things, like, you know yeah the intensity man the fire of it like it was just fire and then you had the water because you had people like they're just they're chilling they're waiting for their moment and then the fire boom and you're like ah oh. and then they're yelling and it's just God. you know so just it's a different it just was a unique thing and it's it's special to me because and so connecting it it connects to the samurai and it's there, it's a competitive form of what the samurais did in terms of developing their effectiveness. And so just like the IBJJF has kind of taken jujitsu and evolved it in a way as a sport for what it, it entails, that's kind of exactly what kendo is. And so it's interesting to look at it in that way and see the parallel and go, oh, okay, like these guys are, they're narrowing the focus to such a degree that you have these really powerful segments and, you know, is it a real sword fight? No, but I, I wouldn't, and I say this in the film, like I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to um, duel with these guys, you know, like at all. <laughs> and they're fucking, they're serious. So, <laughs> like Man, in a sword fight, I, no I, way. <laughs> I just remembered, uh, I think we hung out in Japan when, uh, when you fought in Japan, when you were at, uh, when you were fighting, uh, not so not the soccer alba fight but uh i think you fought what was the one is dream it's called dream okay were you who are you there with i was with uh jason mayhem miller real shonen yeah uh, yeah those guys yep. yeah that would have been so that would have been because he fought um he fought jacare right Jacques that that's right that's right that's right yeah yeah so we were like on the bus together and oh that's yeah. right that now that's coming together cool I, was, I couldn't remember either. I was like, I know we were we were, we were together sometime, but that that was the, that was the that I think that was one of the last. Oh man, what a what a special moment, man! What a special moment! Like yeah. I won that fight. That was my second professional fight in front of like how many people were in that arena? That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah wow. yeah that was that was a big deal man and just coming out of there and like oh man what a feeling what a, what a journey you've had man like from i'm seeing you as a kid you know competing in the local circuits in in la and then mm -hmm. uh fighting fight fighting sakuraba in uh you know japan you know uh, <laughs> to just all the stuff that you've done i mean metamorris you know like metamorris like for me it was like just epic you know just putting that together you know on that on that scale I mean, uh, I'd never seen anything like it before that, you know, I don't know if you watch, did you watch the ADCC this, uh, this last, this last, this last one in Vegas? Yeah. And I saw, it was hard not to see all the highlights. I didn't watch the full thing, but I saw a lot of the good highlights and man, it looked awesome. It looked cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I can't help but think about like, you know, you're part of that, that just the production and just all that, that putting that together, you know? um you know the, like the inspiration right we like metamorphosis very much broke a, a hole in a brick wall for jiu-jitsu and for the athletes and we were like this wrecking ball that just broke we just broke the kind of like um this barrier where it was like oh okay all of a sudden you can do professional jiu-jitsu and it's it's elevated right and so that was like that transcendence where it went oh, okay like you got to give more respect to what these guys are doing and so yeah man it's uh <laughs> yeah 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 it was mm. uh i i ended up you know i got to uh, we hung out with uh, mo the promoter right uh, beforehand and so i ended up going you know and uh i remember mm. going to the first grappler's quest nogi grappler's quest right in uh in vegas back in 2000 Mm -hmm. you know 2000 and so 22 years later it was here it was in unlv thomas and max center you know with uh the pride announcer bruce buffer you know the whole all everything that you could pull out you know they did you know i did see that i saw bruce was there that is cool the pride yeah. the pride announcer too mm. Mm. everybody had like you know like they were in the olympics they had you know they talk about this is the olympics of grappling right and they had them all you know uh, with uniforms were representing their countries coming mm -hmm. out and she announced every single person that came out and uh it was pretty cool man it was pretty cool and they had a hall of fame uh uh part two you know uh mm -hmm. that was really cool and uh i was just sitting there and like the guys are making their speeches and like yeah i'm really proud and you know it's an honor to to, to receive this and i was just sitting there in the chair and i was like man it's just an honor for me to be a part of the sport you know something that's given me so much and uh, helped me like you know transcend and just made my life you know better and allow me more than anything give giving me purpose better than yeah. giving me purpose you know to help other people do the same did you do did you you got an award you said for I, your, no 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 i didn't I, no 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 oh, I, I was i was just in the in the seats so i was just watching it and yeah. uh, just watching it was just just watching it i felt so proud just to be there and to see mm -hmm. the evolution to see the sport you know uh, you know, where it is now, even with IBJJF and them doing these big, big tournaments. I mean, we were like, you know, sitting outside, we were in the, the day before weigh-ins with like eight hour, eight hour, six hour, whatever it was, uh, lines for the weigh-ins and things like that. And just all the, you know, nobody, nobody cared. Right. We just did it from the love of our hearts and just to see it, you know, be, be, what be, be that, that, that light, you know, and that main, like of a kind of a mainstream sport, even UFC. Right. UFC, we I fought right in those early days and representing jiu-jitsu, but I didn't. I just did it because I wanted to, you know, prove hey, does, does this jiu-jitsu stuff work? Does it, you know, just to push myself right? So, just to see all of it, and then just there was just a moment when when they were getting the awards like Dean Lister, Kira Gracie, Hodger, all these, all they they got uh, they got their awards, Hoyler Gracie, and uh, just being there, sitting there, I was like, man, like I'm just so proud to be here, you know, to be be pop be part of this sport, be part of this martial art. You yeah. Know? Man. Mm. Yeah. It's an interesting thing, right? Like being a part of it. And like, for me, being a part of it meant that I had to do more than compete. It was always this sense that like, if I compete and I do well, I'm supposed to do that. Like I'm supposed to be a champion, you know? And so it's like, it's like the easy route. And I don't want to say that it's easy. It's not easy to be a champion. But the idea was like, in my head, it was this idea of like, no, you have to take the hard route. Like you can't go 
And, and that's kind of been my path, you know? And even like Metamorris was the hard route because like Rob, my partner, he was involved and we put millions of dollars into building it. And then all of a sudden he wasn't involved. And so then it was like, I have a choice to make now where I don't have the financial backing. Like, can I bridge this gap? And there was too much energy. There was too much expectation for me to just walk away clean and be like, okay, forget this. And that was before Metamorris 3. And so the vibe was like, man, we've got to, you know, and so in my head, I'm like, you, it's a, it's, it's a gamble. And now you're gambling for, can we make, can we get to a point where we have mainstream distribution? Can we get to a point where we have mainstream sponsors? Can we bridge that gap? And that was a, that's a dangerous game to play. Uh, and, you know, a lot of hard earned lessons, but yeah, it's cool to see, you know, what, like obviously ADCC being just a consistent force, like just continuing to do jujitsu for this amount of time, like they were inspiration for Metamoris. And so it's just like, they're, they're this kind of mainstay thing. And they just, it's been consistent and they've had the, in, they've had the capital support for so long to just keep it going and build it up in this very consistent way. Whereas we were taking a full long jump, dive, leap, whatever you want to call it for something that was going to go to, you know, this whole other level. And so it's cool that we kind of assisted them in jumping to that, that piece. Um, but in a way it's like, you know, it, you got to be consistent. You got to keep it moving. You got to do the right thing. You know, you got to pay people, you got to be, everything has to work. And so it's just like, and yeah, if we would have made it work, it would have been like Holix a hero, you know, and we didn't. So it's like, okay, you're, you. uh, and so, yeah, I had to. And so the irony for me is like, at this point, I wouldn't take it back. Like I'm with everything that I've gone through, I'm just like, oh, okay, like I needed this as a person. And I don't know if that's very selfish, but that's exactly what I needed, you know? So it's just like, oh, like here we are and let's go, let's move forward. It's not just I, like I, have, I have so much to contribute still. Like, and I, and I feel like I'm just getting ready to do that. Whereas before it was like, here's spoiled Halek who's like really doesn't see what he's doing and like really doesn't have a connection to his roots in a way that like maybe it looks like he does and doesn't really respect and understand like how much his position is like really really important and really kind of a blessing you know so it was a lot of disconnection from like what am I really doing what's my lane you know and so but yeah I just kind of went on a tangent brought it back to myself rather than uh the ADCC thing. but no, no, that that's it though you know it's uh it's interesting right what you're talking about just uh you know the jiu-jitsu you know like it's a business right but it was a business but like this, it's different right because everybody's so in interconnected in a way you know and going back to the ADCC like you know you go to the tournaments and you see people that you haven't seen it's like a reunion right like a family reunion and yeah, all over yeah. the world were there and yeah. uh it was pretty cool man it was pretty cool it was like a tournament but i wasn't competing this time or i didn't have i didn't have anybody competing you know i just went to to be a part because he's like this this is going to be you know he, he'd uh you know from where they came from the last like two years ago they had it in anaheim and they did better right but the ones before that there was like no production they had one in china that you know, I don't think even the internet or whatever, the, the production, I don't know, you know what happened. The mats are coming apart. It was just like, this is the Olympics of grappling, right? And so yeah, uh, it, it, it is involved. cool for you. It's so cool for you to be able to just like, I see what you're saying, like to be able to just be there as a spectator and just appreciate like, and I, I feel you on that. That's really cool. That's And it's funny because that's ironically like how I feel now with jujitsu is like I'm in like with my lane, I just, I feel so much more grateful for just like, oh, okay, that's what I'm doing. It's not this like, it's it's all, like I got the relative notion of it. You know what I mean? And that, that might sound weird, but like, I think for you or for other people who aren't Gracie's, it's like you guys kind of like jujitsu saved you in a way, whereas we were born in the fishbowl. So it's like, we didn't have, you know, and so now it's like jujitsu actually saved me. And like my jujitsu saved me on my journey because it gave me a connection to all these other styles. And so now I'm, I'm just like, I'm barely coming to that point where I'm like, oh, okay, I can see it for what it is. And I can see it relative to myself and not be confused about that and not be like, it's just all one thing. And I'm kind of on this mania of like, I'm just a Gracie and it's everybody should, should respect that. And it's like, yeah. no, no, no. You have to do the shit that you need to do in life. And that has nothing to do with your last name. It has nothing to do with anything. Like you have to know your lane and you have to respect like where you come from and where you're going ultimately. 
And that was like, you know, a big thing for me. And so I relate to that in the sense that like, you're able to just go and sit there and observe and appreciate like for what it yeah. is. Yeah. Like, yes, it's a big deal. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was really special. Um, I'm, I'm so glad I went, you know, and I got mm -hmm. to go with a bunch of my old students because I, I used to live in New Mexico and I moved mm -hmm. out to LA 15 years ago. So it was just nice just to come together after all these years and just be there and really enjoy this, uh, this moment, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in a time of jujitsu. So, yeah. Yeah. And thank man. you. Yeah. Th thank you, man. Thank you for, thank you for, all your contribution uh it's uh, you know thank you for metamorphosis thank you for you know just all the you know, just living living the life man being a being exam being an example you know um and uh and uh this is this is great man this is great like the for, you know all the other stuff too like music and people can you know i've heard people make make fun or whatever but like i i really respect that you know you you follow your heart you you go for it you know and I respect that. I respect that a lot. You know, going from met the metamorphosis, you, you you made the decision, you know, you went for it. You 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 know, and you do the stuff that you follow. You follow your heart, you know. And uh, Genzai and and the, mm -hmm. your movie Confluence, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. It's really 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 interesting for me. Uh, and uh, we're all interconnected, right? We're all in interconnected, and it's really important to to show that and to 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 show other people, right? how we are interconnected and I, thank really you for saying that man i pre that means a lot coming from you thank you yeah, mm. yeah. how can how can people find out about how can they find genzai and uh, the, the the publication and uh, how can they find out about the movie yeah so genzai.world is the is the website and g-e-n-z-a-i and uh it's all there and it's exciting man the when when does it come out um the, now it's available now. now oh now oh okay. wow okay cool 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 now now when your podcast comes out all right cool and then, <laughs> and then, and then confluence <laughs> confluence when is that when is that scheduled yeah so we're figuring that out um we have uh, i have a friend of mine who is kind of going through that process and looking for some distribution options and uh but still kind of you know trying to get an understanding of what that looks like and um you know that the, i guess the short answer is as soon as possible and in the in the most effective way possible and uh you know so yeah that's man confluence is uh is really kind of crazy like that the way that that film came together like i said just kind of unfurled and the the nature of it like the biggest compliment that i get from people that have seen it is that it's it's transcendent like it's beyond martial arts it's beyond jujitsu like it's just you get to just you know like it it's um it really hit a main line in terms of just being a human experience and story and like and it just i didn't plan it i didn't write it like i couldn't have you know it was like just happened and then the script, I didn't even know that I was going to narrate it. And I didn't really want to narrate it because I didn't want to like, oh, I'm going to be a part of it. Like, I'm the guy. It's like, it wasn't really about me. And then it kind of like towards the end and kind of putting all these different vignettes together and getting a sense for what was there. When I would do little pieces and try to kind of explain it to people what the film was about, people were like, oh, man, you should like put that in there. And like everyone kept saying, I'm like, oh, OK, like. And I would just, and I would do certain, I would break down certain things that I had seen, certain parts of the film that I had seen. And people would be like, oh man, that's the way that you explain that. Like, I never thought of it like that. I didn't realize like there was that much nuance in like sumo, for example, or these other styles. Like, oh man, that's really cool. You should put that in there. And so I was kind of thrown into the, the role of, of narrator and that, and it, and it really worked. And then, so that was the part where I started to go, oh, okay, like I'm going to put down notes. I'm going to figure out how to, and that became the script basically of the, of the narration. And then, but the script of the film, the actual content was like the most organic thing. Like I didn't, like, I really didn't even plan more than like, you know, a, a few sessions where it was like, and the planning was like, okay, I'll be there. You know, I'll see you at nine o'clock or whatever. <laughs> and then just capture what was there and then just cut it in a way where it was seamless and it has this like and it's it's a confluence and you can see that there's similarities and you can see the connection and kind of one of the beautiful things to me is like there's a lot of culture and I'm I'm very much fascinated with like capturing 
a scene in a country and kind of showing what that vibe is and trying to capture some of that like um the patina of like this the experience there which is you know it's always interesting and and then seeing how that mixes with the different styles and how much it influences the style when you just look at it visually and like even the sound you go oh, okay it makes complete sense that like the samurais did this with their swords and then the gracies and the jujitsu and the martial arts in brazil became what it was and even like the capoeira it's like the, the style and the valitudo and how they i'm sorry and the, and the valitudo and the us is like everything just makes sense when you look at it from in this really cultured like artistic kind of like juxtaposed fashion and that was you know one of the fascinating things to me was just how organic all that is um and so man just a lot of a lot of really cool people that let me into their space and that shared a lot and that you know i shared a lot with and it's a very it's a very like a uh, warm kind of development process and then and then just through covid editing putting it together it was like over a year of just this is never going to end this is not going to end and then boom one day and actually on my grandfather's birthday ironically i did my director's cut and i was just like oh this is crazy like why on his birthday and i was like i can't believe this it wasn't planned it just happened that way like there wasn't i did dude because like ask anybody ask my wife ask friends that i talked to they're like when's the movie gonna be done I'm like well and like it becomes this long conversation i don't even know um but man it's it's really come together and i'm you know and the cool thing is the magazine is like a lot of that content there's different parts of it where you're it's fully alluding to what's in the movie as well they're very they're very interconnected um there's a lot of really cool stuff in the magazine as well and footage and other stuff where you start to get a sense but it's all like it's all really there and really organic so it's a it's a blessing man I'm, and I, I didn't ask you where did you go where did you go in Brazil what did you do in Brazil yeah so I went to I went to um actually I went to a CBJJF event in Floripa the mm. guys were super cool there they let me shoot a little bit there's a few shots in there and then I went to a um what did I do I went to um there was a capoeira event mm. and then I went to a capoeira it was like a competition mm. and that was cool which is different and a little bit more modern because they don't you know they kind of show their style and they kind of hit each other a little bit and it was just but that was amazing to see that capoeira event shoot that um we did a um we did a scene with um Diego Moraes mm. who he, so he's at the the yacht club that is um it's on the the Ilha de Guanabara, Guanabara which is an island like right off the side of Rio right, right, that, right. I used to like, the, gov the governor's isle like right, right there right, right. yeah and they have a yacht club and they have a dojo and the, it's a cool story like that dojo was it, it's in the yacht club and and it's like right on the water it's beautiful and the and the dojo is actually um dismantled put on a boat from japan brought on a boat to that part of brazil rebuilt piece by piece on this spot by the guy who founded the the yacht club there and he was just blown away he was fascinated by the building and the structure and the the joinery and the wood he's like i want this and he you know he had the means and he had somebody break he bought it he had somebody break it down the craftsman the Japanese guys brought them, had them reassemble it. And it's a, it's an authentic Japanese dojo in, in Brazil, in Rio, wow. that was actually one of the last places that my grandfather put a gi on and trained apparently. And I was, so I was on the beach in Rio shooting it like a piece, like just some random, um, um, like B-roll and Diego is like standing right there. And he, he comes up and he, he says, Halik. And he was the only person in Brazil that, that knew, that recognized me. And I'm like, this, who, I'm like, who is this? And he's like, oh man, Diego. Da, da. And, and then he's like, oh, you know, I have the yacht club, like you should come. And I'm like, oh, okay, can we shoot something there? He's like, yeah, no problem. And so we set up like, again, it was like, everything just happened like that. And so we're, and then we're shooting a scene and it ended up being like beautiful, perfect light and everything. And they were really helpful. And it's a really cool looking spot. 
Um, so that was cool. Um, and then Rio, and then there was a Samba event. There was like this crazy street parade Samba showdown um, by the, the, what is it? The, um, dang, one of the Samba teams I'm forgetting, but I'll remember in a second, but they, uh, they, have you ever been to that? Have you ever been on like a, in like a Samba, like street parade moving I down? I have the- seen it. Yeah. I've never, I've never gone. But I've been around the I've been hanging out with Capoeira, the Capoeira guys, and they had some some samba events, but not like a main one in Brazil like that. That's that's <laughs> experience, yeah. Dude, like time. the whole the whole group, like, and it's hundreds and hundreds of people, probably a thousand people, and they're moving at like a a point five miles per hour down the street in succession continuously, and they're just they're doing their dance, and it's the same loop of the song of the song it's the same loop and it's this crazy like trance music song samba song and it's just everyone's just like dancing and going crazy and it's just like wow man it's it's hard you can't describe it and to just wow. being there i was just like i what is this like this is crazy like wow. this doesn't exist anywhere i don't show me anywhere else in the world you won't find this energy like anywhere like the people the way that they were singing as a group the way they were dancing as like the unity of that was just like mind-blowing and I just went like oh okay and the thing is is that to me the way I interpret that is like all of that has to do with why Vali Dudu and MMA came out of Brazil like why the Japanese went to Brazil and then how that movement became was, was a was a was like a, a flower that was in Brazil it wasn't a Japanese flower. It was a Japanese seed. And then it flowered in Brazil into something that was like, oh, that the Brazilian culture was going to make that happen because it's free, because it's like in the moment, it's spontaneous. It's it's like it has this like very, um, what do you call it? Very like aggressive, but very like visceral kind of aggression and like tension. And but at the same time, it's like balanced with a lot of heart and warmth and like culture. And so you have this culture that's like in the samba that's so present. And so that's in the film. And like, I kind of talk about that a little bit. It's just, it's so deep. And like, man, the way that they move and just their swagger, like their style, you're just like, oh, that's jujitsu. Like, that's not, it's love. You know what I mean? It's like the move at the hips. I I, I fully understand that, you know, the Brazilian culture. (laughs) And I think that's one of the successes of jujitsu around the world is that Brazilian part, you know, just I mean, me being a, like a young kid, 18, I was young, I moved down to Brazil and I was very like closed off, very like quiet, you know, and uh, just the Brazilian, the Brazilian culture influence on me, like changed me completely as a person. And yes. uh, I think that's yeah. one of the reasons why Brazilian jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu, you know, is grown so much around the world, even back to Japan, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so we're working on a lot, like with Genzai, and we're doing a lot of stuff. And one of the things that I'm working on is, and it's already in the works, is a serial. And that's like the Genzai thing is like right now, what does that look like? And and a lot of it is like it's it's all these other people now, and it's like different factions of Gracie Jiu Jitsu that are you know everyone's kind of built their own style off of, and there's just so much to that. But you still have people like Henzo and like. You know, and then you have like Heido and my cousin in, in New York, who's now like from Brazil, but now in New York and he's competing right. and doing really well. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, that's interesting, you know? So, um, yeah, man. So, it, and it's funny because I feel like more qualified than ever to kind of like put the lens on my family because I'm, because I've like had a separation event in my own life where I'm like, oh, okay, like it's, it's not this, you know, like I, I, I appreciate it more. I appreciate it differently and so it's really it's a it's a really important thing for me to look at and like think about like how our family has gone from like brazil and that culture to now it's like worldwide and you have people like hodgers in london you know like what you know and like his culture and his experience being in london and so yeah it's it's fascinating yeah Mm -hmm. man well thank Mm -hmm. you man thank you so much for for your time what a what a what a big pleasure man to talk about the about all these things very very deep you know and i'm like i said i'm really looking forward to just seeing some of this this the your your projects come out and i'm going to check out your uh your uh your magazine right away but uh i'm going to send you the i'm going to send you the, i'm going to send you a link great, so you can check it out great, great. And, um, 
Yeah, I appreciate the support. And I hope to uh, connect with you one of these days when, I, when I'm out there or when you come out here to LA, go over some taxi things and just, you know. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, It'd be my pleasure. Yeah, connect. Connect. So let's do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, man, keep up the good work. And I, I've listened to a couple of your podcasts and it's cool. And I, you know, I like your energy about it and you're, you're doing the Bruce Lee thing, you know, you're seeing it and you have, you know, you've had some heavy hitters on the show and you have a lot of different kind of opinions and stuff. And it's, it's cool to see that. And it's, you know, it's a lot of work. So much respect. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. All right. Keep up, keep up the Thank good you. work. Talk to you later. All right. Ciao. When I'm out there, when you come out here to LA, go over some taxi things and just, you know. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, It'd be my pleasure. Yeah, connect. Connect. So let's do you. it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, man, keep up the good work. And I, I've listened to a couple of your podcasts and it's cool. And I, you know, I like your energy about it. And you're you're doing the Bruce Lee thing. You know, you're seeing it and you have, you know, you've had some heavy hitters on the show and you have a lot of different kind of opinions and stuff. And it's, it's cool to see that. And it's, you know, it's a lot of work. So much respect. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. All right. Keep up, keep up the Thank good you. work. Talk to you later. All right. Ciao.